not. But I do believe we are jumping into draft. Mm-hmm. And we are going to see a Nyx and a Doom as the that first like two bands. Really makes sense in my eyes. I'm sure these two teams will be, I guess, really going for the Lion pick. I don't see Lion being banned out by either of these two because they'll definitely want it. Yeah. Lion is a great hero. Uh, yep. I mean, I don't even know what to say about Lion anymore. Hero is just too good. <laughs> and obviously, <laughs> there's four bands they prioritize over yep. Lion, but I think Lion deserves to be in the top four as well. Yeah. I think so too. Lion definitely deserves to be banned, but it's also one of those things that if you have the ability to pick it up, why would you not go for it? Yeah. Um, I, I know I've asked Gods this before, and he absolutely loves Lion. I've also asked Ares as well. They're two big fans of it. But do you think there is another support that's kind of on the same level or caliber or could counter and match up well against Lion? It's a, it's a tough one. Like, nobody really does what Lion does right now, which is like yeah. instant initiation plus huge amount of burst damage. Uh, maybe something that's really good against him and that isn't picked up a lot lately is uh, Abaddon as well as Grimstroke, because both of them have like a harder spell, which is really good against the Hex and earth spike that he has but like the, the biggest problem is just they don't offer the same instant initiation which is what's so scary you're a six slotted carry you have a bkb he jumps you with instant hex you're like ah i'm dead <laughs> and you can do about it's it that quick yeah, yeah. I, I, i'm really surprised first shadow shaman has fallen out of favor because shadow shaman was very popular in the chinese region that hero was getting picked up all the time and and now we see Puck Lion, like, oh yeah, Lion's, Lion's there, he's ready to go. They ban the TA on Elephant, they're following the right steps right now. Lina yeah. doesn't necessarily need to be mid. Um, we've seen Lina in the they four position it. feel pretty good, and uh, I think it's definitely open for Ehome to interpret how they want to play this Lina as it's only yep. their first pick anyway. And Lion to you... accompany the Puck, just because it's a hard counter to Puck, so it makes sense to pick it together, because Lion Puck is really good together as well. Do you like the Lena getting more priority over the Lion from Ehome? I mean, they had first pick. They could have picked up that Lion. It's because it's very versatile. Like, it can go mid. And we have seen mid Lena just do so much work in the last series. Yeah. And, and the entire qualifier, really. It's probably one of the most busted mid heroes right now. Her, her <laughs> stat gain is insane. Like, the way she scales into the mid late game is insane. Her laning is really good, too. There's almost no hero that beats Lena in lane. It's, it's a strong hero. Like, originally, you would pick Puck to beat Lina in lane, like, two years ago, but Lina received so many buffs that now Lina actually beats Puck in lane. Is that another thing you'll be sending off to Icefrog? You'll be telling him, nerf Lina and put no, in the token no. system? It's my MMR hero. <laughs> like, I pick it all Text the time. Lina. Easy MMR. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good. But Ehome is yeah. also really low on time. Yeah, yeah I was about to say that. I am really surprised that we still haven't seen a pick come out from them. I thought we'd be moving on to the next phase bands, but there you go. There's the baton that you said wasn't really in favor at the moment, but it's coming out here in the grand final. Yeah, makes a lot of sense against Lion and Puck. If you both get coiled, you can just run out and break the coil yourself and then shield the other person that might be coiled with you. And we spoke about how good it is against Lion in theory. But if you get hexed and they just stun the other guy, then you can't really do much about it either. Not. I'm gonna assume they didn't use all of that time just to thinking about thinking about an abandoned pick. Yeah. I'm hey sure guys, they're trying abandoned. to figure out. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm sure they're trying to figure out, you know, some pairings to go with it. So, what do you guys think they will try um, and put in the same lane as this abandoned, or I guess team fight cohesion wise? I think they're waiting for Black to say it because he's so far called this draft pretty much perfectly. So I think they're just watching the stream. They're just like, all right, what is he going to say next? Oh, nice. what, what, what's the pairing, <laughs> They're just Black? sitting quietly and they just use all their bonus time, random in your own. <laughs> Why isn't he saying anything? <laughs> say something, please, Black. Go, oh, come on. <laughs> Guys, we're going to pick it. He's not saying anything. Because that, would be so that was just per actually, you were just like, hey, yeah, Abaddon works. And then they waited all this time, two minutes. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Abaddon came out. And I was just like, yep, <laughs> all right. Best drafting way. Listen to the analysts. <laughs> <laughs> no, but generally, uh, what, what, what you want to pair with a, a baton in the safe lane is a hero that has problems staying by himself, but usually high damage, like Morphling, like Terrorblade. Heroes yep. that can farm very well, 
if they are full health all the time. And heroes that get bullied easily. But then you have this Abaddon there and suddenly you can't bully them out anymore. And Terror Blade has not been touched yet. It's not a hard counter to anything, but... I mean, TB first two wins a lot, so... I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Eom just goes TB or some, something crazy like that. It's a lot of range coming crazy, away. But... <laughs> it's definitely not. You know, if TB does make it through this ban phase, again, another hero that I'd be very surprised if it doesn't get picked up. It normally is banned out during this phase, though. Yep. Along with the Medusa is another hero we see banned out a lot during this phase. Mm -hmm. Especially Eom, they love their Medusa. Elephant, yeah. probably not as much after their first game yesterday. Wow, Void Spirit ban. Void Spirit. I'm a little surprised that hero is just not getting picked that much, but it's one of those heroes that's on my mind time. if I'm thinking XM. Yeah, but it's like Does it's it definitely one of the. It, it's okay. XM giving Almost mobility every... like. It works with it so well. Yeah, but lion, but yes. Void Spirit into the lion and puck. That is. That is very for scary trouble. Yeah. Mm. Elephant respecting oh, XM a lot, yeah. obviously. But I yeah. think it's just going to be an XM Lena, to be honest. Definitely could be. I wouldn't okay. be surprised if Fade ends up on that Lena, considering they banned like the Hoodwink. I think like Fade's really loving that hero right now. Yeah. It's just like, all right, well, I can't have my Hoodwink. I'll at least take the Lena. Maybe all XM of China, can really, right? Else. It's either yeah. Lion or Hoodwink for the plus fours. Open yeah. Luna, okay. Yeah, TB banned, so not going to be possible for your home to pick up. Yeah. Luna coming out. Ban TB, pick Luna, because TB is the big Luna answer mm -hmm. usually. There's still a couple more in the pool. Like, I wouldn't mind Medusa at all. Medusa's very good. Uh, Ursa Warrior could work. Get that with an Abaddon, not a weak lane. Yeah, the Ursa. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen a lot of uh, Ancient Apparition, really, in this five yeah. position. I feel like that's. It was like first before the longest ignored. time. but Yeah, and he's just been completely ignored. Yeah, I feel like for, for so long it was Wyvern, AA, and Lion were like those, and Nyx, right? It was those four supports that... Wow, quickly into the Tide after that Mars pick. And then quickly into the Medusa. And then there's wow. the Medusa. Yeah. Well, they did use all of their reserve time. And then, yeah. you know, now, thing, now they've got to throw out these heroes. Yeah, when when they spend so long on the Abaddon, you've got to know that they're thinking more about what can come. There's no way you spend over a minute just for an Abaddon pick. But they also I, I, I answer nice. immediately. Have answer immediately the they pick the tide on the side of elephant. Um, obviously a little bit of that front liner. I mean, elephant know what to do though. Like they played this except exact matchup pretty much yesterday, the Medusa mm -hmm. against Luna, and Medusa will come out ahead if you don't start pressuring uh, somewhat yep. early because Luna is gonna hit a much earlier timing than Medusa, and you. Really got to make good use of the timing, which Elephant so far in this qualifier overall have been struggling with. When when is that window? Like, it's usually to... after one, two items. Like you can mm -hmm. go into the Dragonlance, Fast Manta, you're going to be very strong. Some people go Dragonlance, Yasha into BKB just to get that really strong power spike in the mid game. And I think you're probably going to focus on trying to be a little bit more active. A little bit earlier this game. Like, he's not going to go full greed. Oh, ban the Ancient Apparition. What? There you go. And AA. <laughs> you talk about that it wasn't really being looked at, and they looked at it. Um, yeah, so they're still banning up mid heroes. Hmm. Predictions yeah. for final picks out of these two teams. Well, so um, I'm expecting Lena middle. What's the four yeah. Fade likes to play? I feel like Rubik this game is not a good hero, but Fade's Rubik this game could steal. be doing a lot of work. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. there on the on the menu. When you look at this game like a Rubik, you're just like, oh yeah, come on, yeah, use Eclipse, <laughs> use Ravage. I'm good, I got this. It's probably gonna uh, be a Dark Will if it's a four. Yeah, Dark Will, Earth oh, Spirit. Okay. Yeah, I definitely see that. Like Fate strikes me as a Dark Willow guy. Yeah, he it was banned in the last series we watched them play against him, right? It was like that yeah. final ban of the Dark Willow, and I think. They're banning mids on Elephant to make sure. Like, I think they want XM on that Lena. Like, they're, yeah, they're you really want that though. It's so scary. On yeah, that. Which is which is pretty scary. And then it's the mindset is probably just what? Like, we think we can beat the Lena and we're just going to continue yeah. to ban mids. So they feel like they have to play the Lena mid. Okay, right now though, Lena looks Thomas really good right. in those core matchups. Like, Puck, Luna, Tight aren't that good against Lena, especially within the bat and backing up the Lena. Like, it's not going to be easy. Well, maybe the try to force it mid and then 
they counter it with i'm trying to formulate a thought here and i have one but yeah, i can't on, put it no. into words right now i'm trying to go along the lines that they're forcing this leaner into mid because they know how to deal with it late game but that means they would phase. have to put puck on like a plus five position which would make the lanes very weak they ban one mid and one four so they're not at all sure actually oh. what's happening <laughs> wow and it's See, the shaman, shaman too. Is very interesting <laughs> that's they're who like... they pulled up the shaman and the aa that end up getting last banned yeah I, mean, I feel like Dark Willow here is really strong for the lane mm -hmm. and for the game overall. Like their team fight, Mars, Medusa, Dark Willow, is pretty disgusting. Like there's almost no chance to fight into that. Feels yeah. awful to play into. You can dodge the whole eclipse as well. Like yeah. she has a lot of good things going for her. Yeah, I mean they've only got 14 seconds, but hopefully they come out with the Dark Willow. Yeah, tune into the draft mm -hmm. really quick. Yeah, uh, what did he say? Okay. I'm surprised you're not. Obviously, they can't pick anti mage, but I'm surprised that wasn't a, a talk for you guys. Oh, the Rubik is oh, gonna come that out. That is the Rubik. Okay. I'm not too shocked at that. It's the same thought. Buffet menu for the for the Rubik. Yeah. Tuning into the stream again. What Rubik never picked? Oh, why did he say that? Okay. Prove him on. Prove him on. Pick it. Pick it. Pick it. Guys, Rubik, Rubik, fast, fast, fast. Five seconds. Five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> the last pick for Elephant. Then it's also gonna be a four or five. Seconds. It's usually super on the line, so I'm expecting some FY hero. Earth Spirit would he be, could be okay. Kind of hero. Does he play the Mirana weak, again? Though. Mirana could work. What about Dark Willow for them with the puck combination, maybe? I was about yeah. to ask that, but Dark Willow for them. As if I would play the hero about though. Yeah. I'm, and not That's a really, tough pick not, for FY. Like a big Dark Willow guy. Yeah. He played that Mirana a lot. And Grimstroke. Okay, I like that. Ooh. Yeah, Grimstroke. Yeah. Dev Good Grimstroke heroes. Double Gush, double Lucent Beam, all the Lion spells, of course. But the, this Rubik is like, he can steal from everybody this game. Every, this yeah. is the perfect yeah. Rubik game. Like, one of the best ones so, I've seen in a long time. Having seen Seriously. the drafts completed now, Black, where are you going to put your prediction for this game? Which team do you like the look of? I think I really like Ehome's draft. Like, their front line is yeah. very strong, and they don't have. Good heroes to cut into the backline on Elephant. They have a puck, but he doesn't deal enough damage to deal with the Abaddon. Mm -hmm. And BKB is coming out from the Ehome side. Okay, so you'll mm -hmm. be sitting with Ehome, B Cup? Uh, I kind of agree with the the choice of Ehome. I'm not putting uh, my career on the line on this one. Uh, I'm just <laughs> gonna. Not. Yeah, I already. I, when you go 0 for 1 in that kind of prediction bet, it's uh, very scary to put that back on the line. But I, I yeah, kind of. For Elephant, at least, I think this is... It's game one of a BO5. It's Somnus on the puck, and I think that's a hero that he has a lot of confidence with, and that's something that I think Elephant are trying to build early on in the series, and that's going to be very important. This is one of his best heroes. So if he has a really good game here, I think that's going to be indicative of what we see for the rest of the series. But if Somnus yep. struggles on this puck, I could see Ehome kind of getting into like a 2-3-0 territory. But I want to go Ehome with this one, but I, I'm going to go and, you know, even up the panel. I'll go, I'll go Elephant. All right, I, I like the look of Ehome, I like the Rubik, I like the Medusa. And again, maybe Elephant are just trying to settle in, see how Ehome are performing today before they um, get any further on in this best of five. But I will let you guys take it away for game number one. You die. Yeah. Thank you very much. Danke. Danke schön, yeah. Arigato gozaimasu. That's all I got. I, I, I'm repeating what you said yesterday. I know you repeat everything I said yesterday. But yeah, uh, just looking over all the lanes, like Medusa should be free farming against Titan. It's a pretty easy lane. And then getting out some deep wards with a, with a smoke. I don't know if they saw the Lina ward. I believe they did because they put the ward much earlier. So they should get dewarded momentarily. But this Rubik is going to be the big make or break factor for the Ehome side. Like, he has yeah. so many good spells to steal. Their last pick did for a reason. They obviously have a lot of faith, a uh, faith rather, in this Rubik pick and in Fade. There's a lot of Fs here right now, which confused me <laughs> a little bit. But like he can literally just win them the game if he gets some good steals, some clutch steals. Yeah, I, I think it, we're gonna see like in the best Rubik game is Rubik still like. Bad. Is Rubik still a pick to be? Yeah, that's because uh, we talked about that. I think there was one game in the DPC that was really like this, where Rubik really had a menu worth of things to get. And so, does the question become, 
is Rubik just that bad of a hero or not a hero that really keeps up anymore, even if he's got this buffet of abilities to go for? Yeah, it's definitely uh, an important question to answer, not just for this game in particular, but maybe the entire series, because Rubik is a very special hero where you can either be a hero or zero, right? Like you get this really clutch steal, like a Ravage, you own super hard. Or you get an anchor smash and suddenly you do nothing because your hero basically lacks an ultimate. Yeah. The very feast of feminine hero. Feminine hero. <laughs> Why are there so weird sayings in English, man? Like your language needs some makeover. Well, yeah, you know, we can make it a little bit easier, that's for sure. Yeah. What was the word yesterday? Discombobulated? Discombobulated? Yeah. It's a great word. Yeah. What, what was the other word it's you just said? E echelon? Yeah. yeah. Echelon's like, a good one, too. What, what are these words, man? Like, why is it so complicated? Like, how Ooh, do you even so spell echelon? E-C-H? I have. I want to tell you I know the answer to that, but I don't. It's a lot of... So we have the SAT here in the United States, and, like, my my mom and dad used these to be like, that's a good SAT word, hon. And, like, you'd always remember these ridiculous words, and... You'd have to like define them during the test, and so you you hang on to these words for so long, and now you finally have a chance to use them. But you don't actually know how to spell them. I don't know how to spell them, but you know, like uh, erroneous is a good one too. Yeah, I mean it's not important, you know, as long as you know that the word exists and you can say it properly. You don't need to spell it. We're in 2021. Yeah. Exactly. Look that up. Ask you to spell that other than me. Use Google. Google, tell me how to spell Ashalon. <laughs> right, getting back into this game. How is Somnus doing? Very well. 7-0 so right now. He's, he's having a perfect lane. And this is why I like the puck pick. I, I thought that this is a hero that he can certainly gain confidence on. And I think he needs that too. Because as we said, he's been losing lanes against Exum a lot. This, this qualifier. Yep. I think that's one of the biggest things that you alluded to in terms of like where this series can go, especially with Somnus losing to XM so often. So if you can get yourself a bit of uh, confidence going Bruh. right now, that would be big. Is that? Yeah, he's gonna die here. He'll be the first blood going to fade. Unfortunate here for Elephant giving up that first blood in the bottom lane and it is the Rubik who gets it. An early, you know, quick kill with uh, Telekinesis, which is I think very rare with Telekinesis rare, level 1. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, it's just like a mini stun, basically. It's, yeah. It has the same duration as a Lucent Beam, which is kind of sad. But they do end up getting the kill. Like, Rubik is a pretty decent laner, though. Like, his Fate Bolt makes you trade very well against heroes like Lion, especially. Super again. Yeah, he's in damage. trouble. The Spear lands, the Telekinesis pulling him back, Earth Spike. Still kind of walks into Chalice. They've got the God's Rebuke. The Hex comes out. He's going over towards his Courier, maybe to make sure that that doesn't die as he runs away. Yeah. And they get a big creep pull off, denying pretty much the entire wave. We're going to be able to steal that creep, though. Yeah. Luna gets it. Well played by Eurus. It's basically a free camp for him. A free big camp for him. Another bonus 100 gold. He says, thank you. What was the Luna build we saw that was very different? Uh, I think it was like the first day we were covering this region. It was a uh, like what zero points into the Lunar Blessing or one point into the Lunar Blessing and going max everything else. I think it was the Glaives. Like he had one of the Glaives at a four zero four, and it was with a TA also, just because you already have a greedy TA, you can't really afford to go max into the Glaives. Right. But this time around, he should have a pretty good time. Like, they have a puck middle who's not greedy at all. Going really low, though. Now, puck's sitting really low, but they're going over bottom for a second onto Yuris. He's got that stick to heal up. Yeah. Luna, very strong lane, of course. How is now really looking? Tight Hunter is getting some damage. He's only Another spear uh, super? He's 14 and 0. It's not terrible. Super's going to die here. Spear God's Rebuke with the Fade Bolt. Fade getting himself another kill now 2-0. They're getting it's level two down here. At least Luna's still farming well. That is the yeah. biggest priority of theirs, of course. But 
One more kill like that, Fate suddenly has mana boots, and then Mars has infinite mana to spam. It can get very scary very soon. Looking over at Somnus to see if he's still struggling, uh, you know, at all. But he's right there with XM. Yeah. His net worth is actually quite a bit higher than XM, so even though he struggled with HP for a little while, he's doing very well. A little bit worried about Yang, perhaps. He does have his ring, but every time he comes close, he just eats the snake and takes a lot of damage from it. So if you're Somnus, do you hit level 6 and alleviate the pressure over top by rotating there? It's a tough kill. And Fate is middle. If you can. Yeah, they're going to go over. Telekinesis oh, into the yellow. Save got the Fade Bolt. And now the Illusory Orb is going to take him far enough away. Dragon Slave. Oh, gosh. That was close. Fate still wants to stay. He's got Fade Bolt in 6. If Somnus gets greedy, we'll see if Fade wants to go for it. And he'll actually just back off. Probably would have lived regardless because he had raindrops. But... A lot of pressure coming out from all of these lanes. How do you kill his Medusa now is the question. His mana shield and 11 wand charges power threats already completed. Even if the puck rotates, this is not going to be an easy kill. Because you have a Grimstroke there, which isn't the greatest plus 4 for killing a Medusa. Super in trouble again, but Fade, he's actually the one who will fall. They try to set up onto this lion and, and it doesn't work out for them. That's a, a good kill to get to really open up a bit more for Eurus here, and Eurus is having a Chalice pretty good time. Or Spike, Chalice, force back with some heavy right clicks out from this Luna. Yeah, no Hex available, otherwise there would have been another kill. But of course the level 1 cooldown is very high. So some of the back middle, that means no rotation from him. Same as XM ready. Spike again. Oh, they want this. They want to get this kill. They've got the ink swell. They brought the Grimstroke over. It'll pop right on the Chalice and they will take out this Mars. This lane is starting to turn very much in the favor of Elephant. They brought the Grimstroke in. I think kind of knowing that Tide is just going to have to deal with this Medusa. It makes you wonder where the Abaddon is throughout all of this though. He could have saved the um, Mars down there, and he hasn't really been able to do a whole lot. He tried to deward middle, didn't find a ward though. And now he's on the way back top. Oh, those are big stacks. And he's gonna spot them. Yeah, Lina might so want to rotate is, can there. They take him away? They're gonna fight into a rabbit soon if they don't do it ASAP. Yeah, Yang halfway towards level 6, now getting body blocked, crack and show, it procs, but Yang is able to squirt through where X Nova gave him a little bit of space. I'm a, a little surprised he didn't go one level into the Curse of Avernus, but goes 2 2 zero. Yeah, usually, especially in an easier lane like this, there's at least a level, as you said. Interesting. It was 10% slow on the first level already. Could have maybe even gotten them to the kill there. It feels good early. I, I'm a big fan of level one Curse of Avernus. Same. How is Mars doing? Almost six. So when Mars is six, I'm expecting Nia to rotate there. Oh, he spotted super. That's an arcane room for Puck. It's a big one. Probably the best rune he can ask for at this moment. Yeah. What is he going to do with it? Now going in deep six. again. Just to block the camp and get a deep ward out. X Nova's here. I, I, if you're Elfin, I, I think at this point with the way X Nova positioned going towards Yang, you think he? I, do you assume that he backed off and went towards this? Ooh, Ooh they broke he the, smoke. the smoke. Now you definitely know that he knows, and getting this kill might force you into a spot where. You move and take these stacks, and then they'll get the kill on the super. It's XM with the Laguna Blade, but they'll take out X Nova in return. I'm very surprised Super went up that hill alone after the rest of the team getting unsmoked and going for they the bad and they killed it on the Abaddon. Yeah, I don't really understand why he would go the other way. Yeah, we have seen those miscommunications from Elephant throughout the entire qualifier, though, which has been one of the biggest struggles so far, I'd say. Deward there by FY. I'm very aware. 
of what X Nova was doing, and you have to assume it's X Nova. He's warding wherever he's coming from. Yeah. And especially if you have stacks there, there's no way you don't want to put in deep vision. You just contest Yours that. Yours is cutting through mid, so he should be able to come over in a second, and maybe if you have Yang come down, split this farm, give some of it over to this, uh, for the, give the majority over to the Luna, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, he's sitting at the top of the network already. And he has a big ancient stack waiting for him as well. Oh, he's a very happy Euros. And now with the pack middle rather than the TA or some greedy hero, he's going full Luna Blessing, full Glaives. Yep. Makes a ton of sense. Gonna get another stack? Yes. Yes. The camp is so good. And now they'll Much know that this other camp is blocked. They're taking this, they're trying to take this top tier one. Siler is only just able to watch. Fade coming over. Fade's level six. So if Yang uses Ravage in the wrong positioning and just gives it up, they could turn this fight around and, uh, yeah, Elephant are forced to leave. I think they're very aware of what Fade's able to offer. And the four heroes that were up towards top won't put the pressure on to make them back off. Yeah, X to Pete, though, and didn't really manage to do anything, even with using the Laguna. And Titus Ooh, is going to back lands. up. They've brought Somnus down towards bottom. They have the Dream Coil. The Hex was there. Waning Rift. Silence and the finger from Super to get a kill. Good rotation from Somnus. They had FY down here as well. Yeah. Two movements from Elephant so far. I think the only movement that really made me wonder and put my hands on my head was Super going up onto that high ground. But right now, Radiance Elephant look very clean. And I'm, I don't think E Home look bad in any way. I think their reactions, though, have not garnered them any results. Yeah, I'd agree. And they're just always a little bit slow. XM though, he has Invis rune. Euros yeah, they want to go careful. for Eurus. Pops the Mask of Madness, and now look at the LSA. They should be able to get the kill easily. And with Eurus off the board, do they maybe pressure getting this stack? They've got four heroes top. It's pretty hard to fight into the Ravage still. And the Puck has Coil available in 20, so it's going to be a tough team fight around there. Yusa has an early level in Stone Gaze, though. So potentially could work out, especially if Charles is in the neighborhood. Hmm. They have Soulbind, however. So it's going to be a tough fight all around. And they get another stack. It's like a six stack at this point. Arena down. Spear hits on a super. And the stolen Earth Spike to get the kill there, and Chalice will get credit for it. A double bounty room for Puck. Just comes in and snatches it. Super's just being a... Uh, cannon fodder right now, but I think kind of like a feeding that's bag. fine. Casual, like, oh. you know, tactical feeding. Yeah, you guys want some food? Yeah, I'm gonna... You know, distribute some. <laughs> The problem is with Lion against Rubik, in a way, a Rubik can be a better Lion if you give him the wrong spells. Like You yes. want to try to make sure that you give him the mana drain if possible, but right now he's running around with level 3 Impale. Which, of course, you get bonus cast range from your passive, and once that Etherlands comes out, which it does now, it is going to be a very, very long stun. Same with the Hex. If you ever steal Hex, it can be like a full screen Hex. They're gonna go up onto the high ground. X Nova here to break. He just reached six two. Ink swell, silence, borrowed time gets popped. They'll throw the Phantom's embrace on him. He'll right click it down and get some, some gold, but he'll right. still die. Ten gold feels good, but still dead. Yeah, but that's opening up the bot tower for the dire side. I don't think they can defend that. Oh, can Eom defend the mid tower, which is pretty damn important for them. Medusa maybe. Manta style is completed. She's pretty tanky. Chalice says, I don't yeah, want to give up his tower. Yeah. That's the power of Lina, of course. You get this very strong damage talent at level 10. You can take those towers down, no problem. I think you and are going to look to fight because they just picked up the Blink Dagger on Chalice. It's getting delivered right now. So they'll throw down the Sentry Ward. I assume Smoke and look to get a pick off if they can with this Blink. Yeah, they're probably not looking to team fight right away. Because they want to have the BKB on Lina. But a, a pick off or two would be very beneficial to their cause. They still have the Earth Spike as well. 
from Rubik. And they're sort of just walking around. There's looking a little scene. unsure. Actually, now they smoke up, they're looking for the Luna. Do they have enough damage to kill him? I'd say no. 19 one charges, health. ready to survive. 19, yeah, 1900 health too. Yeah. I think there's no chance. If you want to smoke up, you need to bring Alina as well. It looks like a botched smoke. So far, at least. Shouldn't be able to find anything. And Earthspike is also expiring. Momentarily. Yeah, he's only got about five seconds left on it, so he won't have that to at least start the fight, it seems like. But maybe he could steal it again. They saw the mass under the ward. So... Blink Dagger is no longer a surprise. Good map movement from Elephant, and they've got this Dire Ward that's spotting them moving around the Dire Triangle. So they know where yeah. they are now, but... What will they do with this? They're going to try and take the Tier 1 up towards top. Yeah, this kind of ward should not be allowed to be there. Like, Elephant need to be aware and try to deward it because it just gives way too much information and now it's going to get dewarded. Well done, my super. And now Eom is kind of blind. They only have this one ward on the top lane and they smoke right away. Making their way to bottom, but again, Chalice and Fade alone, they don't have the damage. They need the Lina as well. Medusa is TPing in first. Signaling but Elephant. Showing the TP that... just moves Elephant back. Yeah, which is weird. Like, if you want to TP, you TP into the trees. Because they're just signals want... Elephant that they want to defend the tower. Yeah, that was uh, showing that TP, I think, just botched that whole movement. Yeah, very interesting. Lina, though, is still farming very well. Almost has BKB, 200 away from it. And that's her strong timing. After that, there's nothing really that can touch her. Like, nothing. Now the Radiant Smoke up top. But I think they're going to miss the Lina just by an inch. Hmm... <laughs> Lena actually doesn't have the mana to TP out, but he'll run Ooh, back. Oh, they might him because of this. Pass. 10 seconds. Do they scan for this? Yes, they do. They know where he is. Just not in time. The idea was there. It just, he got the mana to TP and left. Yeah. Now Sila, though, does he know? <laughs> he's, he's always playing such a dangerous game. Like, we've seen it yesterday as well. He's farming far away from his team. Where all of the enemies are waiting for him. They don't want to go Roche on an elephant, right? It's so risky. They have BKB on Luna, but... They're just going for it. Yeah, Lina also has BKB. Wow. question is, does Ehome know? Well, you got to expect down the movements from top, right? So they dewarded, and then they got the scan. Yeah, so they assumed that they were going to be here, and they, they assumed correctly. Oh, Eris. Recognizing that Roshan's an Ehome fan at the moment. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> no double damage this time. It's almost always exclusively wait, right wait, when they're it's going through Rosh. Coming, bro. They'll get the spear. It's all the way back, but it doesn't connect to a tree. Oh, no, no, no. Massive. They've got the finger on a chalice. They'll get the kill, and now they're going to soul mine this Rubik over. Rubik. Throwing back an Eclipse. They've got the right-click damage coming in out of yours with the BKB, and now he's trying to run. Ends up being a trade of offlaners. Agency. Like, he spears... The, he gives tied the free blink dagger into the back line, basically. He ravages the entire team. He just didn't connect with anything that he would get stuck to. But even if he does, he has Kraken Shell, which will just purge it off immediately. XM uses the BKB so it doesn't get ravaged, but the, <laughs> the rest of the team, they don't have that luxury. And still somehow Fade got Eclipse. Yeah, which almost killed the puck. It kind of salvages their uh, little misplay there, to be honest, because if puck doesn't get that low, maybe he gets a kill or two in the back line. But Fade with quick fingers, making sure he made survive. But yeah, Chalice has to be careful. Like, if you provide someone a free blink like that, your entire team needs to be ready because it didn't look like they were. You know, they all got ravaged right away. They yeah. Pretty confused. Philosopher's Stone for both sides. 
supports That's on good. both sides are happy. Oh, fate. What oh, nice reactions. Oh, he actually lifted him closer to himself. Okay. Here's the earth spike. Oh, he missed it. But now they've got the arena. Nice arena on both though. supports. That was a quick Phantom's embrace. The silence. That's well done. Super still going to die though. He's the cannon fodder. Yeah. F1 worth the spear. Zero, zero, 004 and he's going into the Ags right after this Aether one. So he's got Aether one's keen optic and going right into the Ags. This is similar to what we see on Nyx Assassin where Ags is the game changer. The thing though is that if Medusa is aware of this and he turns off split shot, the Phantoms or the Dark Portrait is not going to do a whole lot because there's no split shot. Suddenly the Medusa illusion is not that scary. It's not like a Luna where you can't turn off the glaze. Right. Which uh, Sila will have to make sure that he is on point with his activation and deactivation of Split Shot because a Split Shot Medusa Illusion can literally just destroy an entire team. There's so much damage coming up from it. And then uh, you, you finally get it. You, you use that Dark Portrait and potentially Fade steals Dark Portrait and throws it onto the Luna. He can be popped by XM over yeah. bottom. Uh, why did he do that? There was no... No dream quote used either. Oh. Top lane again. Telekinesis onto the tide. They've got the earth spike as well as the spear. Yang trying to run the Kraken shell, almost helping him survive, but they've got the arena to lock him down. They aren't killing him just yet. And now the Ravage comes in and he's immediately he stolen. Away. Somnus goes to the back lines. He's trying to stop this Ravage from coming out, and that's exactly what he's going to do, getting a kill on a fade. And they never killed off Yang. Soulbind, well placed. And now another Eclipse coming out from Eros with the BKBB popped. The Soulbind will connect the Medusa over to this Mars after killing off this Abaddon. And they're going to go and look for more. They smell blood in the water, and they really want to pounce on it. Chow's getting low. Illusory Orb over to this camp to the side and not getting the kill onto the Mars, not sticking with Chalice. Yeah, they need XM to be there to kill the Titan. He's the biggest damage they have right now. And they committed everything on the Titan, who has a Heaven's Halberd and a Hood and an Essence Ring. Very survivable. If Puck doesn't take out Rubik, though, this fight goes completely different. Yeah, because he would have had Ravage ready to go, but I, very aware by Somnus. Very aware. Yep. That's the problem of Rubik. He's just very squishy. Look at him, 980 health. He's looking for a blink, but he's going to need an air on this relatively short, uh, shortly after that. Double damage on XM, though. And there's smoke. All right, by Roche. They have enough damage to take this Roche, though. They have no Ravage, I know this. So it should be a free one. Do they still go for it, though? No Dream Coil for four seconds. I don't think they're going to get there in time, nor they're do not I even think aware, that they're they? aware. Like, they're slowly realizing, you know, but they weren't, like, fully aware. They're like... Yeah, maybe they're Roshan, guys. Like the, the typical matchmaking thing. And then Roshan has fallen to the dire. Ah, like, oh, yeah. I was aware. I was right on that call. <laughs> yeah, guys, I told you. You just didn't listen. Yeah, your team doesn't listen to you, and yet there goes the Aegis. Medusa goes the with... Hands of Medusa. With a bit of a different build, going uh, Manta MKB. Yeah, she always does that now. Like, that's like the Scylla special. Not sure why. But other Medusas have been different than Sila, right? Very different. And even if you want to go damage, I feel like Daedalus is a better choice than MKB just because... Sure, Tide has, an hel has a Halberd, but... Like, the rest doesn't have any sort of evasion at all. And Daedalus is just a more efficient damage item. Hmm. We'll see. At least Luna can't buy Butterfly like this. That's something. Yeah, preemptively in front of a potential butterfly, but yours is going into a Daedalus himself. And yeah, like you said, we've been seeing a lot of Daedaluses on the Medusas. Is this something that you've... You said it was more a Silar thing. Is it him specifically? Like, just him? Yeah. Pretty much just him. Like, other Medusas build a two if there's sources of evasion. Which... Worst spike. Oh, there's a fight again. The Abaddon and the Borrowed Time. We'll get the kill on to X Nova. They started that with the arena, and I don't know if that arena was just to leave and they ended up catching the Abaddon. It was a little bit short yeah. from Chalice from he what He wanted to leave for sure. Because he didn't really catch anyone. He just kind of put it in a way where they can't chase. Mm -hmm. They're looking for Tidehunter potentially. They have to be careful. Ravage is up. 
spear and they'll steal anchor smash yang though still very tanky and survivable anchor smash comes out and now he's got the ink swell a lot of space for him to run fade bolt comes through and they still just can't kill this tie they've got the hex out of the medusa which will send ehome going the other way xm though coming from behind can he get anything out of this? Laguna Blade comes down on a super. Again, he's going to be the death there for Elephant. With BKB, that's BKB early from XM, but they've got the telekinesis. They'll slam Yang down, and they still cannot crack this watermelon. XM is very trigger happy with those BKBs today. And he has to be very careful now. If he gets coined, Already down to six seconds. Yeah. I, I mean, at least it is still six seconds because in the old older patch, it would have been five. It has Ravage, as we said. But Scylla is the big Gang frontline, and they can't really kill him. Too. They've got this vision. They know exactly where they are. They want to make the move. They've got Euros coming in from the side. They'll... Oh, Scylla going by himself. Earth Spike misses. But they've got the silence. The waning rift is there. They have the control. Tanky, the Lance, it comes out from Scylar. He's quite tanky. There's the Dream Coil. Tokenis is coming out from Fade. He's staying over to the side just in case the Ravage is thrown by Yang, and they haven't even gotten that out yet. So he doesn't look like he'll even throw it, at least before this first life is gone on the Medusa. Arena over to the side, it only catches FY and now. What will he still? He'll steal the Ravage. He's being gonna get in there. They get the kill on Asyra. They're gonna look over as the Laguna comes out of the Yang and they still don't have the damage. Eclipse out of the ground and they get the kill on X Nova. There's the Ravage coming in, but do they have the damage? The right click's coming out from XM. He's got the BKB once again. They get the kill on the years. They look over at Yang. Can they finally kill this Tide? Spear lands on Asom. It's the damage out of the puck with the two man Earth Spike and the finger on the XM. They get the kill on a Fade as well. They'll take out four. They'll look for the full team wipe. His Chalice is on the run without mana. And Yang's right in front of him. There's the anchor smashing. Swell looking for the stun, and they'll get it. Triple kill for FY. Full team wipe for Elephant. Despite the fact that Fade lands a very massive Ravage and gets the turnaround, but it goes the other way as it's a bigger spike from Super, who's been the cannon fodder. Six deaths to his name, but the two mana spike is what turns the tides. We really gotta. Like, if you're silent, you gotta be more aware of your surroundings. This is not the first time that he gets caught up like this. Yesterday, they almost lost the game because of the same, very same reason. This time, he just wanders off to the left by himself. The entire team goes to the right. He dies once. He is not the Scardy Medusa we usually see. He's not that tanky. He dies once, gets ravaged, gets eclipsed. He has no defensive tool and just gets blown up. Without Dusa, you're not winning that fight. There's just no chance. XM, we spoke about his BKB being very low. He tries to kill the puck before he dies, but that doesn't happen either. Now suddenly Grimstroke has that Aghanim Scepter. So Scylla once more, he has to be very on point with turning that off and on. And this is a very, very early, early Ags for Grimstroke. And he got that Philosopher's Stone, or as Lacoste would call it, the Philly. Yeah, Philly Sandwich. Chanted Quiver for the Medusa, as well as the Elven tum Tunic there for the Mars. Yeah, so currently Medusa was split shot and the 50% uh, bonus damage from a Dark Portrait is hitting for 300 on every target. So you have to absolutely make sure you turn it off because your team cannot tank this kind of damage. Like your Lina is just going to die. Yeah. He's going very Let's heavy see. into the damage. Silver Edge even to just break the Tide Hunter, potentially burst him before he gets the ult out. Uh, yeah, like, especially with the fact that they weren't able to kill him that entire exchange that was like crucial uh, yang was just the big tank right in front and he really had no fear i mean he itemized all tank right and they still focus him now he has a blink dagger he didn't have that previously but if you focus a tide with essence ring wand halberd as well as hood i mean even soaring makes you more tanky it's a very tough nut to crack. We're gonna have to see how the initiation goes next time. Because they are going to have that silver edge very soon. And then they have a way to kill the Tide Hunter reliably. Like Silver Edge into his spear can die. And FY getting the perfect neutral that he needs right now for this dark portrait, grabbing that psychic headband, getting that extra cast range. Having that 16% intelligence, he got what he needed. He wanted the Ags. That's what he got. Drops off the Philae Stone, which I believe is now getting delivered over to Super, who's got his Blink Dagger. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of key items coming out for Elephant. 
Medusa still needs about 2,000 for her Scotty. It's going to be very important as well. Smoke. Yeah. Four heroes here for me home. Rubik has his own Blink Dagger as well. Had that for a while. But we can kind yeah, of just see the Rubik the impact. In. If he doesn't see Ravage, is very limited compared to like a Grimstroke or Lion. Like he needs those perfect steals every time. Ooh, Yang Makes smoke gets broken. So does that flies. Now they're going to blink in looking for the Dream Coil. Oh, they got the Spirit Shot, that portrait. Onto the Abaddon. They've got the Dark Portrait starting to right click with the BKBB pop by Chalice to go over with the Arena. They've Ooh, got Yang the Zuna, they get to go to Yang. And Yang never got the Ravage out. He does have buyback. They don't have a tier one to go over to. Lucent Beam is stolen. And with that, I think they just disengage. That's the Silver I just spoke about. He's stunned in the Arena. Kraken Shell does not proc because he's broken. And he just gets taken out from 100 to 0. Lina deals a lot of damage right now. Yep, and has that Silver Edge. Like, that, it just it completely shows the difference on the, the last big fight to this one, what they're able to do to Yang. So now, noticing that he's got the Silver Edge, how does Yang have to position to get himself a good Ravager? Be, like, as worthwhile in these in these fights. Yeah. He's going into a Ghost Scepter straight away, just to be able to mitigate the physical damage. Because if you break tight, it's not only that Kraken Shell doesn't proc but you also don't get the 54 damage block per hit which is a very big deal dark portrait off the illusion yeah once that scotty is completed the dark portal is going to be even scarier just look how much damage it deals ridiculous but dusa has damage to kill it it's just usually you're gonna get stunned by something while the Dark Portal is hitting away, so... I don't know if you have the time to destroy that one. 200 gold away from the Scotty. Gonna be a big power spike for him. Ooh, Roshan back up in a minute. Yeah. Gonna be a big fight over there. And both teams have potential to, to do it very quickly. Because Puck has a Desolator. And of course, Daya has the Lina. My Scotty done. It's quite a bit more tanky now. Samn is playing an aggressive build with his puck, so he's certainly feeling confident on this hero. Yeah, I mean, he did go back for the Aeon Disc, which is really good. Pretty much every puck is doing that nowadays. It just makes a hero that's almost impossible to kill very much impossible to kill. There's no chance. They're gonna move up and have the ink it's swell, Masada. but X Nova, he was the one who spotted this out. They get the blink as well as the Ravage Chalice is gonna go in with the arena. The BKB is gonna be popped by Eurus. They've got themselves the Eclipse down and Fade. He's trying to do what he can from the sidelines. He's only got the Lucent Beam for now. They get the kill on the Yang. They'll end up trading Chalice, but they look over at X Nova. Already used the borrow time. They'll buy back on this Mars, probably knowing that Roche is back up soon. Again, the offlaners trade and they will back away. Yeah, X Nova, another sacrifice though. And you can just see this Medusa right now doesn't feel very strong at all. Like, you get stunned under the Dark Portrait. The Dark Portrait is almost taking him out by himself. Or by itself. It's an it, right? Dark Portrait? Yeah. Taking it out by themselves? Is the Dark Portrait an it or uh, her in this case? It's an it, right? I'm not sure. I mean, either. On this, he does have the An illusion disc, specialist. So. Blink into the illusion beam. They land the spear, but has that Aeon disc and will get into the trees. TP out. Yep, the classic Aeon disc puck. How do you ever kill him? But Roshan is. Oh, Tide is still dead. They might sneak this Roshan before they can react. Yeah, nine this seconds damage coming until out. he's back up, and the damage is just too much. It's onto this Roshan. It's Aegis Cheese as well as the Ag Shard, and. Could suspect that Silar is gonna take this. And yeah, he's got the Aegis, he'll take the shard and he'll activate it. So this is Ehome making great movements towards Roche. Yeah. Yes. Good, good recognition. The tide was still dead. No way he can make it in time. Next time you ask me how strong Lena is, just a reminder that's how strong she is. <laughs> Alright, I, I won't ask again. Like that Daedalus timing on Lina is kind of ridiculous. She's critting for 800, but she's hitting three times per second. And once the Satanic this, is up... Oof. This was the first pick. Do you Dark Portrait the Lina? Now the thing is, uh, Lina is only strong because of the Fiery Soul, and the Illusions don't get that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So Dusa will uh, 
prime target. But just look at this tower fall. Like, Lina's damage output is insane. This is one of the reasons it makes it a good four as well, because you can kind of transition as something that hits like this. Not as hard, not as, you know, not as farmed, but... Yeah. It's overall a very strong hero. Lots of strong stats. Good stats gain. Massive range. Once she's level 25, she's going to have how much range? Uh, a lot. <laughs> 820. A, a lot. Okay, 820 range. Ooh, bottom lane. The catch up Arena. Oh, and disc. And disc. Ooh, the cat, the with him. him. They got the catch. They have the telekinesis. They have the stolen wing. Stop to silence up Somnus. The steal and the silence is not going to be enough to get the kill, though. He'll lose the orb away. Can you catch him? Blind spear. spear. Oh! Oh! oh my god. He yeah. wanted it so badly. And now over mid, they're going to try and fight. Looks like Yang's forward on a Silar, thinking about maybe moving in with the Ravage. He actually doesn't have the mana, but he does have a Soul Ring. Will Wouldn't not make the play there? just yet. He hit him before the spear. Yeah, I think he could have speared. I think he wasn't aware that he was there. He was like really confused. <gasps> he had to hear. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Panic. Just to press every button. Yeah. Ah, he's out. Classic. Lusa's going into the pike. All right, some more mobility for him. I think the big carry, honestly, is just going to be XM. Like, Sila will be there and present himself as food, while XM is going to be dishing out all the damage from the back line. Very close to 25 now, which is one and a half levels. And who is going to reach him in the back line? Like, Puck is going right. to be 25 at some point, sure. But does he have enough damage to kill the, the Lina? I'd probably just say no. We'll have to see how much this Ags is worth it for the Puck. How much a difference that's going to make. And then Yang, he's going into the Arcane Blink. Will the Quick Blink Ravage be enough? Puck also needs shot though. Oh, First spike from a distance. But now the Spear, that's actually going to stop Yang from going in. He wanted to Blink and get that Ravage out. Well done and well aware by Chalice. Look at those beams coming in with the Shard. Of course, getting two auto attacks out every time he beams. Sila is very low on mana already. Inkswell jumping in, going to the back lines. That's going to stun up this Ruby. They get the kill on a fame, but they're going to drop down the arena with the BKB be popped by Chalice. They have the Dream Coil down onto Silar. It's going to be enough, though, to make this fight go their way. They already got the kill on the Rubik. He's not going to buy back, but the damage on the FY blows him up. Inkswell not going to land on the Medusa, but now out of mana, potentially out of time. He does have the Aegis. They get the kill on the XM. The machine gun that is that Lina is gone. So Silar very vulnerable in this fight. Chalice trying to help out in any way that he can, but he was focused for a second, and they've got okay. themselves the silence to force that away. Silar trying to run. He's been hexed up. Stunned once again. There's the Ravage coming up from Yang. They've got the Eclipse drop down on the Medusa. They take out Exova. They'll take out Silar. Four heroes down on the side of Ehom. And that is a big victory here for Elephant. Can they get themselves the full team wipe once again? Chow is going into the pit trying to run away. Yang speared back. That allows him to blink away. But the Illusory Orb and the jump over. He does not have Dream Coil for another 25 seconds. So he's free to TP out. How did XM get so low? Like, XM got nothing off in that fight. And no Medusa, no buyback for a full minute. Yeah, that's a Luna on your high ground. It's gonna fall very fast. And we, we see once more why Rubik is just such a tough hero to pull off. I feel like only Nick does it. he's done a lot. He has. But his Rex is gone. I'm gonna go for another side. Oh, they still have both tier twos actually, so they can't go for another side. And now spell, oh, spell prism. prism. That is disgusting. Is that the best feeling? Like, what's the best neutral to hero feeling? Uh, maybe ballista sniper. But that you don't get too often, right? Like you don't. Sure. That's, I guess that's the best feeling because if you get there and you get that, that feels great. But like, what's the more? It's probably Puck Invoker with Spell Prism, to be honest. Okay. Or maybe a Timeless Relic on Doom also feels really good. Yeah. What like a Spell Prism on Enigma when you have like Refresher Orb is also very juicy. <laughs> when the Black Hole's cooldown is just so low. Yeah, like 100 seconds.
Guys, we buy back and end the game. And black hole again. You're like, okay. Got black hole again? What, what happened? What? Cool down 110 seconds? How? <laughs> and then you got the arcane blink. An arcane rune. An octarine oh, core. <laughs> One minute cooldown <laughs> black hole. <laughs> Guys, buy back, buy back. We're gonna end this game. Is that the sound of black hole? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, be calm. It sounds like my Medusa. microwave. I, I just don't... <laughs> this Medusa is not looking so scary, be calm. No, and uh, when they're able to kill XM like that, I think the team fight, or really the fight potential of E-Home completely crumbles. XM is really strong, but very squishy too. We spoke about glass cannons in the past. I still don't know where it originated from or why people ever wanted to have one, but he is... Truly the definition of such a thing, if it ever existed. Luna about to be level 25. Um, she's not there a glass cannon. Going to the 30% life steal. Yeah. Together with Satanic, that is more than 30% life steal. Shiva's for the tide. What is the dudes are gonna build next? Like, she's just... I just feel like he has no impact in any of these fights. He needs, like, a BKB. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Like, if you don't have Sanj Yasha on Dusa, and you don't want to itemize into BKB, like, games can look like this, where you just don't do anything. You're just permanently disabled, or halberded, or hexed, or ba or ba. There's too many things to come out. Ooh, Samna's getting deep behind enemy lines, and... Let's can't see if we can him. find anybody. Illusory Orb now looking over at Chalice potentially, but they've got the telekinesis. They have the stun coming through out onto Somnus. LSA, XM starting out with some damage with the Fade Bolt is what pops this Aeon Disc. They'll find X Nova. He's got the borrowed time. That gets popped on the Lucent Beam, so his built in save is uh, popped for just a moment on cooldown for 50 seconds. Mm hmm. And I think Elephant is more than happy to just wait until the Aeon Disc is off cooldown again. Because once Puck's Aeon Disc is up, there's just no way of killing him ever. So obnoxious. It's a smoke though, and Aeon Disc is still down. If they catch him. Down for 44. And he has no is buyback either. He would be dead for 100 what? seconds. That would be a massive kill. What did he buy out on? Daedalus recipe. Hmm. Which I don't think it's worth, but... Yang caught. Telekinesis coming through. They've got themselves a silver edge, but there's the soul by Now is going to come in and they'll get the kill on a Yang. But are they going to look for this? Super Hex from a distance. That's going to be the what Hex on the Medusa. Medusa. The Abaddon. They've got themselves the Eclipse coming through from Eurus. And now Medusa in a lot of trouble. They're over to the side. Use that stone gaze. They turn. Zone is the stone. Oh, he gets the face shift off. He's going to be able to survive. They get the kill next. Nova, they'll finally take out Sora. Sonic size for the first time this game. He doesn't have buyback. He's never 99 seconds. They'll drop on the arena with the BKB, but it runs Don't out. He's running through. Oh, the spear. It pushes him over to fate as well as X. Yuris, he's gone. That's three big kills. They bought back on Super FY trying to run. He's got the ink so Maybe even looking over at Chalice. That's going to pop with the two-man Earth by coming out from Super. Four staff away. But now, let's see what he can do. Spear out. Doesn't hit Super over to the tree, but they've got themselves the Hex out onto Chalice. Chalice will chase. This will be a big team wipe for Ehome. And there's the Earth spike. They've got the Yules into the air. LSA, a couple of right clicks, and XM gets the kill. That is a massive fight for Ehome to turn this one back in their favor. Holy shit. That's exactly what we said would happen though. Silas presenting himself. <laughs> Maybe he knows at this point he's just worthless, to be honest, compared to his XM Lina. Making a lot of good space in the team fight for Lina to just right click like mad. Fade steals Eclipse. Steals a lot of really good spells. Massive impact in that fight. And we said it. Somnus can't die with Aeon Disc, but he gets caught with it on cooldown. That might honestly this just is be. the bottom set. It's gonna be. Two sides at least. Not Megas, because they have the mid tower still, but... I don't know if it's sides. two sides just because they have to go top from bottom. Yeah, true. They still have 20 seconds, but that's not a whole lot of time. Roshan is up, so maybe they're just going to go Roshan and secure themselves that. Which he has to refresh a shot. But... <sighs> that could have been really dangerous for Yang. Because if he gets caught, he's silver-edged and dead. 
Are they gonna go Roche? They're going straight Roche. There's no way for Elfin to stop this. And that means three for three for El uh, Ehome on Roche. Just look at the damage output now, again from Lina. She Roche is so fast, it's insane. Him. Like, Radiant is aware. They might even smoke out, but they're too slow. It's already gone. There's no way for them to get close enough. And there's going to be the Aegis into the hands of XM. And I think that's the proper choice. I think that would have been the proper choice in the previous one in, as well. Sylar picked up the Aegis, but like, Lina's the one outputting the damage. Level 26, and he, you've got your talents. You're getting into both sides of the talent tree. And it's just going to be stronger and stronger from here. Sila finally finished his BKB, though. So he's going to be able to output a whole lot more damage. They need to make sure they kill the Dark Portrait, though. Because last fight, again, it was a split shot Dark Portrait that caused a lot of problems in the backline. Especially for XM and Fade. So they gotta focus that down no matter what. Refresh a shot on Rubik, actually. Maybe looking for a good Eclipse. Double Steal. Ravage. Or Ravage, yeah. He I'm it. hoping he's gonna go for Agon Scepter next on Rubik. They're gonna come out of the high ground. X Nova, and now Somnus going in deep. He's got the Somnus into a couple of these heroes. They'll drop down the Dream Coil, and that's gonna be, uh, well, Rubik in a pretty bad Yang spot. Again, again, he gets again. low, but he's not dead. They get the Ravage off just before Yang ends up go going down. And they look over at Yuris. Yuris is in a buyback. He's got dropped down the Eclipse, but the Tokenesis comes in, they get the kill on the ears, they'll only be able to take out Fade. The Arena through, as well as the Spear that lands on the FY, the Andisk will be proc. They'll try to TP, but there's just no chance. Three heroes dead on the side of Elephant. And that is not a good fight for Elephant, and now a 6k caught. lead for Ehome. Super. Hex, God's Rebuke. Super, hit with the Tokenesis. They'll steal the Mana Drain, and they will go after this Lion and get the kill eventually. The right clicks will be enough. Tight bot back, despite not having Ravage, they're feeling the heat right now. Puck still has an Aeon Disc available, a lot of right-click damage to his name, but it doesn't seem like it's enough. He doesn't have Revelation either, in case he catches XM. He doesn't clear the creep wave. It's gonna be a second side at least, maybe even Megas. 50 seconds as Yuris did not have buyback, and now he's looking to go for the Divine Rapier. He's 1,200 gold short from having buyback. It's gonna be Mega Creeps. XM never even lost the back. Aegis. They've got the Arena though covered FY once again. The Spear comes through. He doesn't have the Aeon Disc, but he drops down the Soulbind. It's gonna leash up this Medusa over to the Mars. They've got Telekinesis on it. Yang. Sound is trying to do all he can with the Dream Coil onto the back lines. They get the kill onto this Grimstroke, who's dead for 94, and they will get themselves Megas. Ooh, I say that. Preemptively? No. All right, we're good. They backed up for a second. Yang? Yang. Uh, in trouble. He's very far. Ooh. He's still getting They're looking for him still. They've got the break, and now Chalice has the spear. He's just caught in a leave, bad position. Leave, they land leave. the LSA. They've got the damage to get this kill. I don't think he gets out of this one, but the right click's coming out from XM. And yeah, Yang will be dead for two minutes. That's giving up something that you really can't afford to do so. And now they've got the telekinesis on it. Here is the last spear. going to blow up. He didn't have buyback. That's a game. Evo have just taken this one from Elephant. Oh my. Woohoo. And wow. Thomas tried really hard. Thomas tried really hard. He ended the game 10 1 and 9. But ultimately, he can't do it all by himself. Evo outplays Elephant as a whole. And just like yesterday, it looks like Evo is just overall the better team. Would have thought. Yeah, and. That Coming looked squad, really good. Yeah. You know, like, they, they were on the back foot for a lot of that. They were down 10,000 gold to Elephant. They take one really good fight, and I think the confidence from XM and just the damage output from him was too much to handle. They, they could not so get you, to him. I said it, like, in the, in the draft, they had no real way of cutting the back line other than the Puck, but the Puck can't kill Alina alone. There's just no way. Ever since he yeah. got up to this, he's too survivable. And Luna can't fight. Like, you can't fight into Medusa. And Lina is too much damage output. So sure, you ban the TA, but maybe Lina is a bigger problem than TA, to be honest, because she offers much more versatility than the TA. We'll see what, they, yeah. what they're doing in game two. Yeah, we'll have to see what they do in game two. We'll break this one down a little bit more once we come back from break. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back in a second. Stay right there.